flight of Thunder Chiefs arrives back at its base from a bombing run over North Vietnam. An hour and a half north, six minutes over target, 90 minutes back. A piece of cake, maybe, or a dry throat mission. The command will have the pilot's stories within the hour, and tomorrow's missions will be planned accordingly. But something else comes first. The man on the flight line, the crew chief, is first. He's got to know right now how the bird flew. If there are problems, he'll have the panels open for a look before the pilot gets across the field. There's one more stop before the intelligence room. Maintenance debriefing, the pilot's squawk room. Malfunction junction. Have take off, went to standby. Come on, standby. Went transmit, no green light. So I went back to standby, no white light. Maintenance men listen hard, notating everything. It's technical talk about little lights, little gauges, little noises that didn't quite stop the mission this time. Next time, they could be a matter of life or death. So before the next mission, maintenance goes to work. In fact, whatever the base in South Vietnam or Thailand, maintenance never stops. Modern aircraft are complex machines. For every hour of flight, a fighter plane needs about 40 man hours of maintenance on the ground. Well, it sure takes a lot of time to get one of these birds flying. It takes many support specialists maintaining systems. We have our electronic specialists in our a &E squadron that maintain our inertial navigation system, fire control, communications, electronic countermeasures. All these systems are vital for our missions up in North Vietnam. Specialists to maintain exotic equipment. That's a part of the story. But there's another part. If you're wondering about the man who once proudly called himself a grease monkey, he's right here. As greasy as ever and just as important in this man's Air Force. Oh, uh, we're changing this cylinder on this caribou engine. Uh, the exhaust cylinder stud and this old cylinder has uh, worn out a hole so large that an oversized stud could not have been replaced. Uh, this engine on the Caribou uh, takes quite a beating. Uh, the, the airplane flies uh, lots of times, short missions uh, to 10 minutes or even less sometimes. And uh, on these short field takeoff and landings, it uh, uses um, max power quite a bit. At all bases in Southeast Asia, maintenance works around the clock. Daytime and nighttime lose their meaning. There's only turnaround time, repair time, and how long before the plane is operationally ready. Maintenance Control Center directs the operation. Call on the phone, please. The mobile maintenance unit is a troubleshooter on wheels, in touch with all elements. And see what we can come up to know on, on the fast, uh, may have a bad indicator, I don't know. Turnaround time is shortened by utilizing the latest in technology. This is an engine oil analyzer. Now ready to analyze the oil, which will take 30 to 35 seconds. It takes 300 hours to overhaul an engine. By analyzing the different wear metals and Repairing them, we've saved approximately 250 hours, man hours per engine. At the lonely airstrip in the boondocks, like this one deep in the Delta, there's the other kind of Air Force job in South Vietnam. 
essentially we've got uh, three Ford air controllers at this Ford base, two airplanes for the crew chiefs to maintain. And we keep them going all the time. They, each Ford air controller flies at least 100 hours a month. So they're 300 hours a month flown in these airplanes and flown regularly. Right now we're just pulling what's known as a basic post-flight inspection. It's just a look phase inspection that we pull after each flight. It's to get it ready to fly again immediately. We have Charlie is busy. We're, we're up. We start first thing in the morning, close it up at night, work all night if we have to. Uh, the crew chief has to follow through and keep the airplane ready anytime. Turn around in five minutes or work on it all day to get it ready for a night mission. I'm surprised you haven't heard some rifle fire out of here. Ordinarily, somebody is uh, taking a few pot shots out of here. This is supposed to be a pacified canal, but we know we have Charlie here. In fact, uh, about two months ago, we had a sniper that was working off the other end of the runway down here. I don't think it's completely pacified. Extra crew member with your uh, team here? Uh, yes, uh, Yin here, he likes to go out to field and work with us, so we decided we'd just take him under our wing, make him an honorary crew chief. And he helps us out, and he does a little bit of everything out there. He really knows what he's doing. He's a real sharp kid. And here recently, we found out he wasn't going to school. So we've sort of adopted him, and we pay his tuition, and we send him to school now. Some would say that keeping a boy in school is an act of faith in the future. So it is. But on the flight line, there's no time to philosophize. Just do the job. Aircraft electronics is a far cry from carpentry, but not in a combat zone. This is something we do here, helping our own self. It's where all the inspection section works. It's quality control, and all the boys in here are highly skilled technicians, as well as carpenters, as you can see over here. At a few bases, Mother Nature provides a burden equally hard on men and machines. Blowing sand. The only thing maintenance men can't fix is the weather. At all bases, there are three kinds. Very hot, very wet, or both. And yet, they do the job. Do the noise of heat over here. there's the noise. Always the noise. Our uh, evening shift is probably more fortunate than the people working days during the intense heat. Our barracks are located approximately three quarters or a mile from the flight line, away from the high noise level, and uh, we are able to rest better than the people that are working here during the day shift. Nobody's complaining, but what are you doing up so early? You don't go to work till midnight today, do you? No, nah, I'm supposed to be sleeping now from about 1 till 7 tonight. Flight F4 has just went over. Well, that shot the nice rest. Good old gun patrol, man. It wakes me up every morning. Even if I could come in 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. and they could take off at 3.30 and I'd wake up on the spot. Then there's one more environmental problem named Charlie. On April the 15th at approximately 12.20 in the morning, Rockets coming over Hill 327. I woke up and hollered that we were under attack. Everybody get out. So we come down the steps here. And as you notice, this is a new barracks. Ours burnt down in the attack. But we had sandbags between the uh, outside the wall. So most of us from upstairs bailed in, in behind the sandbags and crawled up there as far as we could so make room for everybody else. And then one of the rockets come over and landed about 25 feet from us, right over in here. All day, every day. That's the routine all over Southeast Asia. Americans far from home sometimes think lonely thoughts. But on the occasional day off,
Some men have the knack of turning a longing for home into a blessing. Sergeant Richardson is a man like that. Eight young ones of his own waiting for him back home. Until he returns, these inmates of the St. Paul Orphanage are his substitute children. This is the uh, Catholic orphanage here in the Central Highlands of Pleiku. Well, we, maintenance men and some of the other staff members, work towards helping the orphanage to build things and to help the children be comfortable and have some of the enjoyments. Long after we've all gone home, a generation of Vietnamese children will remember the tall American. All the while, the work goes on. On occasion, however, a maintenance man has his moments. This is one of them. Gee whiz, I hear you got two mix. How'd you do that, sir? I guess I was pretty lucky. Came off the target, broke the right, which was pretty brief, to join up the flight. And then, uh, after coming around the right, I looked over and I saw a 105 with two migs on his tail. And so I broke down, on the mix, and I don't think ever you saw me, the first one. And, His uh, airplane is back with not in. one, but two MiG yeah, kills in a single battle. So and there's not a mark on so his plane. On Always the maintenance crew and, uh, wants to hear it all. They've sweated over that airplane, pampered it, tuned it like a violin. When it does its job, that's music to their ears. Webster? Yes, sir. That's a damn good flight. I couldn't find anything wrong with the bird. Thank you, sir. Let me shake your hand on that one, huh? Thank you, sir. I understand you're from Tennessee. Right, sir. I like Memphis, the... Memphis huh? right, sir. Well, I like to tell the folks back in Tennessee that this wing had just flown its 50,000th combat hour, and the only reason we could do it is because of men like this, and a lot of others just like it. And that's what it takes to win this bloody war. The maintenance man has always been a key figure in the successes of the United States Air Force. In one respect, he has not changed. He's still the guy who works around the clock to get Air Force aircraft and equipment in top condition for the next mission, no matter how tired, wet, or dirty he gets in the process. In other respects, he has changed. Uh, for example, he must be familiar with the delicate and uh, sophisticated electronic and avionics equipment that we now have in our aircraft. And at the same time, he must document his actions and the performance of his equipment so that uh, the lessons learned can be used for future improvements. We've always been very proud of the stamina and the can-do attitude and know-how of the maintenance man in the Air Force. The justification of that pride, I feel, is at every base in Southeast Asia. We're flying more hours, more diversified missions than ever before. And we're doing this with a exceptional reliability and a high degree of, of uh, confidence that we're going to meet all the schedules. The maintenance man is a good subject for a movie, in my opinion, because he's always moving. And this film has highlighted his role in the United States Air Force. It's the most significant role that I feel will never cease to grow in importance. I'll return, yes, I'll return.